understand the parts of stomach and why the functions of stomach are so important. Also, do you know what is the pH of the stomach? Definitely, you might be surprised to hear that. Now, the pH of stomach lies at 1. If we understand the pH scale from 0 to 14, 1 is where we have, 7 is where it is neutral. Below 7, that is from 0 to 6 or 6.9, we would say is acidic. And above 7 is basic or alkali. Now, stomach has a pH of 1. What does that imply? That implies that the stomach is highly acidic. Now, a simple example to quote is, if any of the bone or any of the teeth goes into stomach, the acid of the stomach would burn it or damage it. So even the strongest material of our body, that is bone, teeth, can be destroyed with the acid of stomach. And therefore, when there is a kind of gastric reflux, we need to understand that uh, alkaline medicines are usually prescribed. If we talk about substances like tomato, it is again acidic at a pH of 4, which is weakly acidic. So, 0 to 3 is highly acidic. Water is considered as neutral. So, water is a neutral parameter. However, if we move on towards the alkaline side, if there is lot of uh, acid problem going on in the stomach, what is required is the stomach medicines. And these medicines are usually weak alkalines or weak bases usually at a pH of around 10 and then we have a strong alkaline material which is like uh, bleach which is used for uh, bleaching the clothes and that is strongly basic. Now if we move on to stomach, stomach has three major secretions. The first secretion is mucus. The second secretion which is very important is HCl that really makes it acidic, hydrochloric acid and the third secretion is the gastric juices. Now what happens when the food is ingested through the esophagus it reaches the food particle reaches the stomach. Now what are these three uh, specific elements we would understand those one by one and then we would understand how these food particles are digested. So mucus is basically the inner lining of the stomach and it secretes a fluid which is called as mucus. Uh, usually it is seen in the neck glands of the mucus that the secretion is there and that secretion is released. HCl which is hydrochloric acid is importantly used to kill the bacteria in the stomach and along with killing the bacteria in the stomach, it also helps the digestive juice to act. So digestive juice means the gastric juice. It is also helpful for the gastric juice to act and gastric juice or the digestive juice as we call it has an important function. What is that? As you can see here, the food particles are churned or broken down into smaller particles. So gastric juice breaks down the particles into smaller particles. Hydrochloric acid basically kills the bacteria and mucus is the inner lining of the stomach uh, that protects the stomach from the hydrochloric acid. This hydrochloric acid is also known as muriatic acid, another important name for it. So muriatic acid is another name for the hydrochloric acid and as I said, it is secreted by the parietal cells in the gastric glands and gastric juices again very very important. Two of those important ones are pepsin uh, or what we call as pepsinogen and uh, chymochicine. So pepsinogen and chymosine are two important gastric juices which are released. Pepsinogen basically acts on proteins and breaks them into uh, with the enzyme pepsin breaks them into amino acids or simpler forms. So this is the major idea of how the stomach digests the food. Now coming on to the parts of the stomach. The parts of the stomach are very very interesting. Stomach is divided into five parts. What are those five parts? So let's zoom into this 
uh, digestive system and focus on the stomach itself. Now, the first thing that you can see here is the sphincters. Now, these sphincters are basically circular muscles which are present and these constrict the normal passage or the normal movement. Now, the first sphincter is present here near the region of cardiac. The cardiac is the first part of the stomach. So, let me first name the parts. So, first is the cardiac. Then you have the fundus. The next part is the body. The next part is the enterum and the last part which is close to duodenum is the pyrolysis. Okay, now let's understand this. So at the cardiac region, we have the first sphincter which is known as cardiac sphincter. What is the role? When the food passes from the esophagus to the stomach, this, uh, this sphincter constricts and this ensures that the food does not move back towards the esophagus or the food pipe. So that is the major function of cardiac sphincter. Now as I said cardiac is the first part of the stomach just below the esophagus and the most important component that we see here is the cardiac sphincter. The next part is the fundus. It's the round area left to the cardiac as you can see here and it is below the diaphragm. So again, important to note, the next is body. This is the largest part. As you can see here, the biggest and the largest part is the body. And this is where food actually mix. And not only it mixes, it starts to break down. The next part is the antrum. Antrum is the lower side of the stomach. And this is the region where the broken down particles, which were broken down in the body, are stored and they are ready to be released to the region of small intestine. So antrum holds the uh, food particles which are already broken down in the region of stomach. Now, this region since it's on the lower side, it's also known as the pyrolic antrum. Now, pyrolysis is the la last part of the stomach. Again, a very important sphincter which is present and this is the pyrolic sphincter. What is the role? Stomach connects to small intestine. Small intestine has three parts, deodenum, uh, duodenum, ileum and jejunum. So, duodenum, uh, jejunum and ileum as the last part. So, duodenum is the first part. So, this pyrolic sphincter connects stomach with duodenum. This is the region of duodenum. Now, what is the function of this sphincter? This sphincter ensures that the food which is once passed into the small intestine does not move back to the stomach and therefore the sphincter which is known as the pyrolic sphincter is very very important. Pyrolysis connects stomach to small intestine. So two major sphincters in the region of cardiac it is the cardiac sphincter connecting the cardiac region with the esophagus. At the last we have pyrolysis as the part of the stomach and this pyrolysis connects to small intestines first part which is geodenum and the connection is through the pyrolic sphincter. So these are some of the important five components of the stomach and we understood how the acid reflux occurs and how and why despite being uh, so acidic our stomach functions importantly and the gastric juices are responsible for digestion of protein breakdown of protein into simpler forms we would be covering many more interesting lectures stay tuned have a wonderful day ahead